Hi, everybody. <laughs> we are Jason and Chrissy. Hello. Uh, at Twin Flames and Harmonious Twin Flame Union. And today we are actually going to share with you a card reading we did uh, for our year. And so this was a recommendation by Jeff and Shalia in regards to unions doing, or, you know, you just doing on your entire year. It's a great time to reflect and really hone in on what you've accomplished over the year and what your future year has to hold for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do it in September because we have a pretty uh, significant week in September. And within one week, we have both our birthdays and our wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. And so it's a really huge reset for us, uh, spiritually speaking, in all ways. And so that's when we decide to do our yearly uh, card reading. And so we wanted to share it with you and uh, provide some insights along the way on what we expect. And then we thought it would be pretty fun to reflect every quarter on it and then uh, see how it goes. So here we go. First, I wanna just share with you, <laughs> good luck. Yeah, the card uh, decks we're using for uh, these series of videos. And so the first card deck uh, that we used is the Divine Feminine and Divine and Masculine Reunited. Divine Masculine came home. <laughs> it's by um, Christabel Jessica. And so uh, it's a new deck that we are exploring that we really like. And then the second deck we have here is uh, a Doreen and Grant Virtue deck, Angels of Abundance. So this was all about, this deck was all kind of about like our union, ooh, our union energy. And this deck is all about like our abundance, right? And then we did two more uh, to pull in specific energies for uh, projects we work on. Uh, we did The Soul's Journey by James Van Praw. And then we also have uh, one of my favorite decks uh, is The Oracles of the Unicorns by uh, Carolina Francesca Brabs. I think they're, so they're good, good ones. So with that, we are going to start with first quarter. So first quarter for us is uh, in great military fashion is October, November, and December. So uh, for this particular quarter, um, I'm going to just go over the cards and then maybe Jay will provide some insights. So we got karma. And so for this one, <laughs> for this one, um, it was just for me, and you can see like uh, there's a couple in the background very passionately together in the forefront is like a lot of, you know, just moving through some maybe upsets or fights. And for me, a lot of this is about like chopping wood and carrying water and just working through the blocks within our union to perfect union because we are in harmonious from film union, but we're working towards perfect union. So a lot of chop wood, carry water energy in this particular card. And also us just, you know, working through our karmic um relationship patterns yeah life life does not uh stop at harmonious union it pretty much just begins and there's all the all the same stuff that you would um experience in you know any marriage or relationship there's things to work through and um luckily in a twin flame union you you're working toward them together um, for a purpose, right? And like, they're not like uh, disjointed working together. They're, they actually come to resolutions and you're able to move forward together uh, in your life. And that's the, that's the good thing about facing, facing challenges with your twin flame rather than, you know, uh, being in separation, I guess, right? Yeah, absolutely. So our second card uh, is Face Your Financial Fears. This is from Angels of Abundance. And um, of, this is a very like straightforward card for us. Uh, Jason and I are moving through a lot of financial changes and it's really time to face your financial fears. And you can see like, um, there's a little cute like couple, like, you know, little kids, you know, walking across the creek with an angel looking over them. And what I got from this illustration was feeling very protected in, um, our life and in, in support and our purpose work and just having, you know, carefree time moving across the, the blocks in the flow of our financial freedom, right? And doing it together as one. 
And so it was a very sweet card. And I know that we'll move through our financial blocks. And I think a lot of people face financial fears. And one big thing about healing is that at the core, we're all one, right? So like, well, we're moving through everyone else is moving through as well in their own way. And so it's, it's really uh, insightful to share what you are moving through because a lot of people may connect with it. Mm-hmm. And I know that financial fears and financial strain is something that's you know, on society's mind at this time. That's over, right? Yeah, and so it's always like good to, to... Me that says, you know, um, children don't tend to take things very seriously or, uh, I said that right. Mm-hmm. They don't te- tend to take things very seriously. And so like challenges or blocks uh, that, you re- that you experience along the way uh, can be experienced in a childlike fashion as not, you know, not taking it very seriously and just moving through it um, in the easiest way you can without putting so much weight and, uh, you know, need um, on on the actual challenge or the block. Yeah. So third card is humor. Uh, you know, and I choose to focus focus on the lighter side of life. I think it kind of leeways into what you were just speaking to, Jay, in regards to just uh, encompassing humor, encompassing the lighter side of life, not being so serious about everything is also very, very important. Um, and this card pulled up for me, and re- specifically in regards to um, map energy and the mind alignment process, and really focusing in on enjoying what I do there, and not necessarily. Um, letting my seriousness in regards to how I feel about it, like teeter into unpleasant territory, right? To always feel light and free in my work there. And so it's really important to honor that, you know, divinity also feels very light and free and fun. Uh, even if you're moving through a very treacherous time or a very like treacherous. serious time or serious job, you also want to have um, some fun with it. And then the last card for this particular quarter, starting out our quarter, is anger. Um, And stay safely expressing your anger and allowing your anger to help like uh, move you forward and motivate you into success. Meaning that we let go of our anger and really choose to heal what's under it. Uh, And also honoring that like all emotions are sacred. Like it's really, really important to express and feel all of our emotions and what we're moving through. And Jason and I are really uh, working on that as we explore being autistic and just simply being with ourselves and moving through any feelings that we have. And we have been moving through a great amount of anger, I feel, in regards to areas that we might have been numbing out in. And so we're working on that diligently in regards to our inner work and exploring uh, whatever comes up for us. What's really important is not to hold on to anger in any way because it will breed resentment. And so it's all about feeling those feelings and allowing um, ourselves to relax into our union in a deeper way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's okay to feel uh, any feeling that comes up, anger, you know, any of those feelings that come up is okay. It's, um, you know, where it gets not okay is when you perpetuate those feelings or hold on to those feelings. Uh, hold on to grudges, resent, you know, that all that stuff turns into resentment and um, really stops your, stops you dead in your tracks on, you know, moving forward. So, okay to feel all those things so long as you, uh, you know, feel through them and, and let them pass and move on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's our first quarter. And you know, when I uh, started this reading, I was really looking forward to it. And I was like pulling the cards and getting them ready. And I had this whole setup going on when I did this. And um, like, as I pulled these cards, I was like, oh my God, what's going on? Like a lot of these cards uh, were pulling up like specific blocks we're working on in our life and in our spiritual life. And um, I was like, wow, this isn't really what I expected. But it's really important when you receive the cards that you choose to move through what it's being present, what's being presented to you and not hold on to attachment to whatever it might be and simply uh, see it for what it is and know that God is always uh, guiding you into deeper and deeper love. And so that's our first quarter. First quarter. All right. Let's move into second quarter, babe. Okay. And so second quarter 
we start with uh, the card from the divine masculine and feminine reunited. It's goddess of destruction, right? We really like this deck, but goddess of destruction. And so what I really got from this deck was really starting to uh, hone in on any ego that we're holding on to and releasing it and letting go and destroying that which no longer uh, serves us and claiming our divinity. And so a uh, powerhouse woman in that uh, particular card that I resonated with. And it's all, for me, it was all about like choosing to embrace our authentic selves. How about you, babe? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next card for second quarter is Windfall of Abundance. This is from the Angels of Abundance card. And I just love this card. It has like a Santa Claus on it, right? And there's a windfall of abundance. And I feel like we experience that quite a bit in our lives. Like we have uh, some, one of the ways that God uh, reveals finances to us is through windfalls of abundance. We'll have these like huge moments of opening up and all of this, these finances coming in at once. And I think that will continue to occur for us. We do a lot with what we're doing right now in our organizations and the things that we do within as one guidance and then um, the church of union is an organization that we're very passionate about supporting along with uh twin flames universe map divine dish and it's all about um just you know chopping wood and carrying water and as we do that we're properly we're, we're completely supported in our lives and that that abundance does flow in mm -hmm. and so i feel as we continue to embrace our authentic selves we heal a lot around being autistic and what that means for us that, um, you know, it'll completely change our lives in, you know, huge ways. Sure. I, you know, you, you can't be like tied to like a particular expectation or um, anything that you think is going to occur. Um, you just have to like kind of let that go and be unattached to outcomes um, and surrender. That's one of the ways that like uh, these things kind of flow to you, these windfalls of abundance, uh, at least for us. Uh, I, you know, everybody's kind of different in how things uh, shake out for them. But the, the main like, um, you know, idea here is to uh, no, not give up because you never know what's around the corner uh, and, and just like be unattached to, you know, where the path is taking you, where your journey is taking you. Yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, next card is friendships from the soul journey deck. Um, and that understanding that you have, there's friendships in your life for a reason. And I think like Jason and I are getting very clear on our relationships uh, in this life and every relationship having a meaning and purpose around it. And I think that uh, as we continue to do our inner work, which is a huge priority for us, and specifically in this particular quarter, we're going to see uh, our friendships starting to blossom more deeply. Oh, yeah. 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 And the final card of second quarter for us is cycles is everything has its right time and really honoring the cycles of our union and honoring the cycle of our life and we do see this where we move through cycles of healing cycles of um, integrating cycles of expansion uh whatever it might be and it's really important to honor those cycles and as you continue with like your inner work i know that i feel that I kind of get a read on my cycles in regards to a healing cycle. I feel it coming, you know, I feel like, oh, here we go again, here it is. But with the mirror exercise, it's so um, very easy to move through them. Uh, it was, it's challenging at times, but it does get easier and easier over time. And I feel we're experiencing that in our cycles is that it used to be really difficult when these healing challenges would come up, but now the more and more we refine um, our communication and our relationship, and really dive into, you know, even our friendship, we are moving through them a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So any final notes for second quarter, babe? Uh, I, I, yeah, I just think like what you just said, like things do get easier, even though the challenges might get, um, you know, I guess easier, more difficult to any particular, you know, in any particular situation, like, um, 
the working through it gets gets a bit easier, especially uh, when when you partner together to to take those challenges down. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. All right, moving into third quarter. This is the third quarter reading. And this card, honestly, when I first got it, freaked me out and I had to move through a lot of like upsets. But this for us will be actually be um, June, July, and August, which is a huge month for us. But the first card is separation. It's number 11 from the Divine Masculine and Feminine Reunited deck. And what really this, when I sat with God on this particular card, it's this is actually when I'll officially separate from the army. So this is when my uh, permissive TDY and my terminal leave, terminal vacation will start, and it'll be the official, um, like official separation it's from the military home for me. Run stretch. Yeah, the... I am on the on the home run stretch to the to the end, right? So I'll be retiring. Uh, so not necessarily separation, but retiring. But it is a, an energy of you know uh, moving away from something that I've been that's been a part of my life for over 24 years because I started in college. Right. And so, um, it's, it's a huge energy to release. I've been working on, uh, really transitioning within my consciousness and letting go of the military on a regular basis for about a year and a half now, because, uh, that's when they tell you to start really, um, releasing is about a, two years out. You're supposed to start the separation process. And so like, it is a, a huge energy to move through and really release. And as I do that, I free up energy that I then put into my passion and my purpose and things that I desire to do, such as these readings or such as, you know, sharing our autistic journey, our harmonious strength and union in any way that we desire. Right. And so like, there's a huge energy that will be moving through our union specifically in third quarter, which is a light, a huge life shift overall. Yeah. And the second card from the abundance deck, of course, matches this, which I, I, I finally figured out God was, a little, God was kind of like trolling me a bit, but it's an employment change, of course. And um, I really see this and you can see like, it's like a female on, on a horse and like she's blindfolded and she's just really trusting the process as she moves through a transition. And so I feel that will really be uh, something that I experience as I transition from the military and just walk in faith with God into my next steps and my next uh, set of employment. And I think overall it will be very, um, very seamless for me. I'll be completely supported in the process and I really am looking forward to it. I feel um, this part of my life, this chapter of my life is coming to a close and I look forward to what God has in store for me next. And so um, this major employment shift will create huge positive changes for our, our union and our abundance flow. And uh, we'll find more time to help and service others through you know, coaching, through map work, through Divine Dish. Like we're really just looking forward to what's in store for us after we release this, this energy, which is in, in essence a karmic debt. So we're looking forward to it. So the next card we have here uh, from, this is from the uh, Soul Journey deck is service, in which of course aligns with the employment change because we desire to service God and serve God and how God sees uh, us, sees fit for us. And it just aligns completely with um, everything else going on in this third quarter for us, which is really uh, fundamental and, and quite awesome. And I'm just gonna follow up with the last card, which is delight. So huge third quarter coming our way, Jay. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it and just feeling free and like we're going to fly and uh, full of delight and happiness and uh, really looking forward to it. So what do you have for that? Baby one? horse. Baby flying. horse flying away. It's, first flight. it's a unicorn. It's from the, oh, baby. the Oracle of the Unicorn deck I introduced. Horse, with. unicorn, yeah. dragonfly. I like yeah. that deck. All makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel that, babe? <laughs> Do you have anything to add? Uh, no, it's, you know, that's the, um, seems to be right. Like, you know, uh, new, new, whole new chapter for you. Starting, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and well, both of us, because, you know. Yeah. Uh, it affects us both. And so um, it's going to be, going to be a hoot. Yeah, we're going to have fun. We're looking forward to it. And so moving into fourth quarter, this is the end of the year. Uh, for us, 
it uh, the first card again i had to go through a lot but it was abandonment so this particular deck um from divine masculine and feminine reunited was really highlighting the blocks that we're moving through uh in regards to our relationship with god and so there's a portion of us that might like you know we're moving through feeling like abandoned by god or that we've been left and like you know we need to go into that space and do the mirror exercise and so that's what we really did we like we, we just did a lot of, of healing work after this reading, took a couple of days to really process it and um, just, you know, find a deeper commitment and relationship with God and love ourselves and um, choose to always be there for ourselves. Commit, meaning that there's no back door, that we go all in with God and that we trust God to provide. And uh, really, we just desire to be of service to God in all that we do. You want to talk about anything on that one, babe? Nope. Okay. The next card is uh, about our abundance flow, of course, is blocking out distractions. And so this was really, you know, very clear card, block out distractions, get to work, chop wood, carry water, focus in on your inner work and uh, building your business and expansion for us. And so that's really where all of our energy will be redirected from the employment change the quarter before. It will really be no distractions, like going all in on the next step of our journey. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the next card was um, failure. So the soul journey deck, we got the card failure. Uh, and I had to move through a lot with this one because sometimes when I feel like I fail or I miss the mark somewhere, I think like, you know, it's over, it's done. And I mean, I, like there's like this almost like this quitting energy that comes up. But in truth, like uh, any time that you fail something, it's just an opportunity to get back up and move forward and continue to uh, like walk in the direction of your greatest good of what you desire. And that's really what this is about is having the courage to uh, continue to move forward regardless of what it looks like. And of course, that's um, the last card from the uh, Oracle of the Unicorn is courage. And like, it takes a lot of courage to continue to move forward, even if you think uh, you failed. And so it's really important to do that inner work. And I know that we're completely equipped to do so because of the teachings of union and because of uh, Jeff and Shalia's work with the mirror exercise and teaching us how to you know, overcome all these obstacles in a very peaceful and uh, efficient way. Yeah, there's, there's gonna be challenges. There's gonna be, uh what you would consider a, a failure uh, that occurs throughout your life in many, many ways, right? No one's, uh, uh, yeah, no one's exempt from uh, failures in their life. Even, uh, the, you know, anyone that's ever um, succeeded in a, in a great way or even succeeded at all at anything uh, has failed every single uh, step along the way mm -hmm. until they hit success. So it's just a matter of persisting, uh, no matter what it is, right? In your twin flame journey, in your uh, life purpose journey, um, in in anything really, it's it's all a matter of uh, persisting and continuing to uh, do the work in order to come to that place where you are successful. Mm -hmm. So something we did for the overall reading of the year is we pulled the bottom cards of all of the decks because that is the overarching energy for that particular deck. And so overall for the year, the first card we got was of God of Sensuality. And when I saw this card, I really thought of, uh, you know, really thought of Jason in regards to him claiming his divinity and honoring who he is. And like, uh, as he does that and releases any anger within that he's been programmed or trained to be a particular way, we're really gonna find uh, ourselves embracing our authentic self even deeper and finding deeper and deeper peace in our union uh, as we move forward. And really beginning to ground into our new roles and what that looks like long-term for us. You know, we're moving to, uh, by this time next year, we should have moved to Michigan, living in our uh, new home. And it's really an opportunity for us to ground because I haven't had that in over 23 years where I've been like, this is my home and I, I, there's no expectation of me leaving it, right? Uh, and I'm really looking forward to that. And I think that um, 
it just will ground us and we'll have a lot more delight and happiness in our in our life in that space oh sure you know? yeah you've had to move like every two years or something like that right so right yeah for a long time you've never really had that um constant home base right yeah and so um, the next card is the clean energy food card. And this really brought DD up for me, but also us choosing to honor the cycles of our body, the cycles of our life, the cycles of food, and really having a very deep and clean relationship with food and uh, grounding into that even more so than we are now uh, moving forward. And our energy will begin to purify in this space as we embrace our authentic selves resulting in higher vibration, success, more uh, deeper intimacy and financial abundance, all, all the things. And so as we really purify our consciousness, uh, we'll have clean energy all around us, which is gonna be quite phenomenal. Well, sure. And yeah. like um, food doesn't have to necessarily mean what, what you eat, but it's like anything that you put into your body or mind, like the thoughts that you think, the, the um, the environment that you place yourself in or the people that you place yourself around. Um, it's all, uh, you know, you want to put yourself into places where you're thinking clean thoughts, thinking, you know, you're clear headed and thinking about, you know, what, what's coming into your mind, uh, is, is clean and clear and not like, you know, muddied up with like all, dark stuff or or anything like that uh, same goes for who you associate with uh and the the circles that you're in yeah absolutely the next card is success and so um knowing that the goal is always to love and go deeper into love and um through all of the failures all of the challenges everything that we will be faced with in this next year uh success is on the horizon for us as long as we continue to choose to heal, be willing to learn, be willing to heal, and really embodying uh, the mere exercise and the work at a deeper level is only going to result in success because that's all we've ever experienced. And we feel as that's what we'll continue to, uh, to experience as we explore our lives together, mm -hmm. right? And then the last card of the overall 2023 energy for us is strength. And really it's all about moving through the challenges and only allowing them to make you stronger and doing so peacefully, humbly, uh, and with a servant attitude, uh, I think is really important. And we must honor all of our feelings as sacred, regardless if it's anger, if it's, you know, whatever it is, it's really important to honor all of the emotional process and simply choose to move through it and to deeper and deeper peace and hold on to the peace, not anything else simple peace, first peace, then love, right? Um, and allowing that to drive uh, drive our successes and choosing to continue to focus on the goals. Strength comes from within, mm -hmm. not something outside of you that gives you strength, um, comes from you. Yeah, and so that is our overarching reading. We'll see how it goes uh, next year. Thank you so much if you stuck with us. To <laughs> listen and if you're interested in any of the oracle decks that we used for this i will put them in the notes below please check that out uh, for more and hopefully you'll join us for the next reading that we might do maybe maybe <laughs> thanks y'all Bye -bye.